We're going to be starting this in 10, 9, Again, guys, it is May the 1st, 2012. It is Learning League, and here, again, is L3RD trying to, you know, explain everything all about League of Legends, all that good stuff in the beginning where you are level 0 to level 32, whatever you want to be in League of Legends right now. And, you know, today we're going to be talking about a really cool topic, but first, here with me is one, the only... Chobra, LOL. What's up, Chobra? Hey, LTRD. Uh, not much. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show. How are you? I'm doing great. Just chilling out, watching, you know, some interesting stuff right now. But, you know, in general, just chilling out right now. You know, we're talking about a really cool thing called a support. I mean, do you expect, like, a support to be kind of like a carry, per se? I mean, we do have the show called I Carry, but does a support actually carry, you think? You know, I would say the support, um, in a way, psychologically, can carry the game. Of course, not if you look at the scoreboard, often uh, the support will not be the one with the most kills or you know even the most gold intake. But uh, you know, they they have a lot of other um, nuances that they can apply in the game to um, carry or at least help their quote unquote carry of the team um, to do their job even better. So I would say they have just as big of an effect. It's just not as noticeable in the numbers. Okay, yeah, I, I definitely have to agree with you on that notion. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't really see it in the KDA ratios, like Trevor said, but you definitely see it in the actual gameplay that is actually happening in the game of League of Legends. So, um, you know, really quickly, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I actually messed up on that custom right there, so I have to redo <laughs> that right there. But, um, you know, we're going to be talking about um, supports right now. I think that's the biggest thing about the game that... You know, not a lot of people talk about just because you know, uh, you know, shoutcasters in general don't really acknowledge them too well. They just kind of say, "Oh, he's a support. Well, he does this, and you know, he's supposed to do this." But support in general is just a really, really, really important role in the game of League of Legends. So, introduction to the whole thing today. We're going to be uh, doing the awesomeness of support. I'm going to go pick a really, really simple support, but. Uh, really quickly, these are carries not really sought out about, but aren't talked about enough. They do magical work in the realm of Summoner's Rift by granting vision, helping others, and even you know helping others survive, even taking the bullet for the team. So they are the unsaid carries that bring out the best in the world of Summoner's Rift. Looking back, I wish I was a support, and we talked about this as I was like a carry, but you know they do seem to carry a bit in the game. Of League of Legends. So first things first, Trevor. Oh, and I know you're gonna be you're, you're like wishing that this wasn't gonna be happening. But how are you today? First of all, okay, we'll, we'll just do that. How are you today? <laughs> oh, I'm doing I'm doing quite well. I have been battling a bit of off because of allergies, but it looks like it's getting better. And you know, if if I were a friend that was playing Tetris and being really really loud. Uh, at, at, at side, you know, by a wall or so, would I be like, you know, too much of a person to, you know, say that, you know, it's it's a little bit much that, you know, you need a little bit of soundproofing somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I have run into a bit of a, a noise oh, issue oh um, my. with my neighbor yesterday. Uh, no, nothing too serious. Uh, the neighbors were very polite about it, and I am. I, I do understand that it is an issue, but yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to figure out a way right now. Of course, I, I don't want to spend too much money, so I'm looking for the most uh, frugal way to go about this. But ho hopefully, a good solution will By come my way, and I'll be able stars. to continue um, casting exciting games for everyone while not uh, disrupting my neighbor's sleep. <laughs> Definitely indeed, and yeah, if you didn't know, yeah, we do have those casters, like I, even if I was still living in an apartment, I, w I would have that problem too, just because, you know, a wall, you, you kind of make noise, you talk, and you get really excited, and then stuff happens, but that's beside the fact, we are talking about sports today, and really quickly, um, you know, what types of supports are there in the game of League of Legends? You know, I would categorize them, uh, most importantly, the 
ones you see the most My and the in some way basic ones are sustainers in the lane they Minions I would say those sword. supports for instance uh, the one you picked Soraka is a very good example of such a support allowing or, or f focusing really on the early lane phase of allowing the carry to farm safely you know not have to worry about getting harassed down to very little else health and having to go back to um, shop all the time, but rather providing them with health or even in the case of Soraka um, with mana through Infuse so that the carry can do the harassing themselves or just you know focus on their CSing even if they take a couple hits. I would say that's the biggest one, otherwise we also have um, Janna who doesn't have any sort of heal but can provide passive sustain in terms of a shield and there are a couple other supports that offer that and then there are the more aggressive supports I would say or in you know these days people are starting to call them unconventional supports uh, such as Leona or Blitzcrank the kind of more aggressive kind of more egg in your face do a lot of damage and stuff like that support and I, I mean I do agree they, there, there are their supports, but mostly we're just going to be talking about sustained supports like Soraka, like uh, Jenna. Right now, um, really quickly. So a support doesn't usually do that. We we don't usually see us. I mean, it is really quiet, but you know, I can't do too much. But you know, uh, kind of CSing is bad for support. What what do you see? I mean, what do you, you know? Supports Great. usually get for CSing. Um, so CSing isn't the main goal, as you mentioned. Um, you want to leave that up to as, or so. Right now, in the current meta, the bot lane is a duo lane most of the time with the ranged AD carry and support. So the support, um, instead of CSing, is trying to focus on getting gold pretend items such as the Philosopher's Stone or Heart of Gold, allowing them to still get. Um, you know, enough gold to keep up wards for the team or any other basic aura items. But most supports um, are basically chosen based upon how dependent they are on items. So as you know, um, Soraka and Janna, their basic kits allow for a lot of utility throughout the game without having to get um, items that provide a lot of stat bonuses. They can benefit, of course. We can see Janna's picking up a lot of AP items or even Soraka, but it's not necessary for them to continue to be useful throughout the game. So they can survive off mainly um, har or gold pretend items. Definitely. And, uh, you know, the go for 10 items that you usually start out with as a support, usually you'll see them rush uh, a Philosopher's Stone, which is what I'll build into in a second. But uh, that'll be the first item, and usually afterwards it's a heart of gold, which is pretty much it'll give you mana regen plus health regen. That's what the Philosopher's Stone does, plus it gives you uh, gold for 10 seconds every, gives you 5 gold per every 10 seconds. And also heart, heart of gold, which also gives you, uh, you know, extra health. So that's really, really strong indeed. Really quickly, uh, do you want to go play some wards really quickly with me? Yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, generally in lane phase, you'll see most people actually ward into this brush right over here, like it, at the start. But that brush doesn't really give you too much of vision. It only gives you that uh, vision of that brush and pretty much nothing else. So usually you'll see um, people ward out this tri brush right here for both teams pretty much but mostly the uh, team which is on the upside which is purple team to so get that vision because you know My a jungler can come through any way of these paths and having that tri brush for red border right here just gives you a lot of vision through you know just seeing whoever's been coming down and such but the other um area you want to kind of ward up is around this area i mean usually you'll see me port a ward right here just because i do get that tri brush ward and that dragon ward about the same place but some people um they can ward up over here or even oh over here into this brush just because they, they want to have that vision but uh i mean those are basic wards do you have any other kind of ward placements um you would see from your side um, I would say, you know, if if you're pressed for gold or if it's early in the game and you don't feel the necessity to put two wards, as you mentioned, at Dragon and Tribush, um, you could put it in this corner brush, as you mentioned. But if you are confident in your um, ability to escape or react in time, you could put it, as a matter of fact, at this corner, um, right as I place it. I'm next to this wall, which will give you a little bit more vision towards this tribush, uh, so you get a little bit of an earlier peak, and also towards dragon. That does expand your view, but of course, if you miss it and they come in and hide in this brush at the corner, you also won't have vision of that. So it is a decision you need to make. But um, as you mentioned, I would say in bot lane, this tribush and dragon is 
um, pretty much the most important two things. And of course, within the lane, if you are getting harassed or if you are very afraid of a potential lane gank, you can ward up the um, lane brushes. Uh, usually, really just the enemy side is the more important unless you're pushed at your tower all the time. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the generosity of just laning or ward lanes or sorry, laning phase wards, which is pretty much just the beginning wards. Like literally, you'll see most uh, pros or most just people in general, if they want to be kind of greedy, which I can think most supports. I mean, personally for me, I, I am kind of greedy, so I, I will get that first two to three wards over here by this little corner where you can see barely a little bit of tribrush and barely a little bit of dragon, just so that you know you can get some vision. But uh, usually, you know, Getting those two wards right here are really important. Getting those wards, if you can, for lane uh, wards are really important as well. Uh, when do you feel you can uh, you can like move out after you know just warding up the tribrush and stuff, or just in general, when do you feel like you can move out to help out your other teammates with uh, wards, or even in general, just like trying to gank? By the power of the stars. I would say that's quite situational, but in general, I do try to wait until at least level 6 um, when I play support uh, as that is when um, your carry will be a little bit more comfortable farming under the tower and such. Uh, of course you want to make sure before you move out you want to make sure you do have you, or you just refreshed your wards for your bot lane so that your carry isn't caught off guard while you are helping your teammates. Um, when I'm in bot lane, I, I don't spend too much time early in the game in other lanes. I may go into the enemy jungle if I feel safe or with my own jungler to ward uh, their red buff or from coming up from the blue side their blue buff or even just to kind of show my face in mid lane to put a little bit of mental pressure of course Depending on the support you're playing, you may not be able to um, help in a gank as much, but if, especially if you're playing Janna, you do have a lot of CC, you have a lot of utility for ganks, so that is useful. But, you know, early in the game, if your tower, or if both towers are intact, uh, bot lane, I would I focus heavily in making sure my AD carry is safe. Uh, if one of the tower goes down, uh, whether it's yours or the enemy's, you know at that point you can make sure um, to go ward, you know, Baron, go ward both buffs of the enemy and focus on helping top lane or mid lane if they still have their towers intact. Yeah, definitely, indeed. I think the other thing I would say is notice your positioning of your creep minions the against their creep minions. The if the creep minions are really pushed up to the tower, like say my creep minions are pushed up right now against the tower, Chobar could probably just go ward up if they can through the dragon or even up to right over here by Wraith to give them that extra vision if ever. Just because my creep wave is really pushed, this also means that either my AD is just kind of struggling or my AD is just last hitting a tower. It just gives them a little bit more pressure, a little bit more time to actually, you know, do stuff. And you know, you can get that extra gank, get that extra, you know, just what the F because, you know, once you have that extra pressure onto the mid lane or extra pressure out to the top lane even, you just can trail more and more of the map which just gives you more and more control of the game, literally. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, is there, is there any question why you wouldn't ward? Um, you know, in terms of warding, I, like, the way I personally play support, I, I do play quite passively, and so warding is pretty much my number one priority. If you are highly pressed for gold, you can see if, you know, if your mid lane has gotten several ganks and they are leading, say, 3-0 in terms of kill and death, they may have you know, a little bit extra gold toward the enemy wraith camp or even dragon, you know, along with your jungler. You can ask for team assistance, especially if you are playing on a um, five-man team. You know, you, you want to make sure that the support also isn't too pressed for gold. You want to make sure that come mid-game, they want to have aura items to help in the team fight. Otherwise, especially if their kit is purely based upon sustain like Soraka, um, they may just be bursted down and out of the team fight immediately. But if they can get those aura items earlier, that will help. So you want to make sure you communicate with your team. But you know, within lane, I would say you want at least uh, one ward at all times in the creek. Uh, you know, if it's only one at the corner, but preferably two at Dragon and the Tribrush. Uh, right. Otherwise, you know, it, it is dependent on your gold intake and how your other lanes are doing. Yep, definitely, indeed, and yeah. You know, I feel like warding is one of the biggest things about League of Legends because more control of the map, more control of the game. Literally, that's what I say, but it's really true because you'll, you'll be a lot less pressured to actually you know, get damage in or take those 
try to take these bots without words, it's pretty much like saying, oh, everybody's uh, MIA or everyone's, you know, about to kill me, but I, I don't know where everyone is because I have no sight on where everyone is at. So, you know, having those words really, 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 you know, make this game a lot easier for not only for you, but also for your team. Uh, last but not least, the I think that's pretty much generally about supports, at least warding wise, uh, about that. Other than that, like we'll, we'll see a game we're about to start up uh, pretty soon. Other than that, do you have any other things you want to mention or talk about for supports, uh, Chobra? Um, I guess uh, going along with warding, uh, one item always in question would be the Oracle's elixir, and. You know that that is a huge gold commitment. However, if you can get that early, say if your lane um, gets first blood and you get that first assist, and you can pick up an Oracle's Elixir along with a gold pretend, you can really deny the enemy vision. Along with um, trying to get the gold back for your elixir, you do get 25 gold per per ward kill, and also now they are going to have to be much more careful about where they place their wards or the timing of it to make sure you don't catch those wards and deny them all vision. Also having that Oracle's Elixir will allow you to not have to worry about um, buying pink wards for the extra gold as you know th that does add up in the long term. If you guys don't know what a pink ward or a green ward, which is a sight ward and a vision ward, the pink ward will be able to, you know, you can see other placements of wards or other invisible uh, items. And so if you have that, you can definitely, you know, deny some vision if you can destroy the wards or destroy anything at stealth. But if you have Oracle's Elixir, it's the same thing as a pink ward, but it's on you as the ch <laughs> as the champion. So it does a lot of bit of work just, you know, giving vision or denying vision, which is really, really strong. I would say um, the notion of a pink ward slash vision ward is really important too. Having that down at, you know, about, I would say about the timing of 10 to 11. 11 to 12 minutes over by Dragon to deny uh, Vision at Dragon, which would be really important just for um, in general because you know Dragon is a really important objective as a, a money source. Getting the early Dragon pretty much skyrockets your team about what 2,000 gold I would say, I heed or about no uh, 1,000 something right? One uh, yeah, 1,000 So yeah, like once you have that extra like gold for your team, it just really really skyrockets your team. So Definitely having that pink ward early over here for that um, dragon can definitely uh, put pressure on the opposing team, but also help pressure or relieve pressure for your team as well if you're actually losing lane or if you're, you know, just having a little bit of problems over in the lane phase right there. Uh, other than that, yeah, with the Oracle as elixir as well, I would say um, I usually don't, like, especially if I'm playing Soraka or anyone that's kind of squishy, doesn't have really any sustainability, sustain abilities, I tr tend not to try, or I try to tend not to get Oracle's Elixir, just because, um, you know, you're kind of squishy, and once you have that Oracle's Elixir, I'll, I'll show you what that is, actually. <coughs> you kind of get focused down as a target. I mean, in solo queue in general, but in general, in just normal games, you kind of get focused down just because you're denying vision, once, first of all, then you're also, you know, creating a little bit of mark on yourself. Like, there's a little pink thing on the top of my head, which I'm going to put really quickly. Is like, oh, I want to get myself killed. So, yeah. Definitely, you want to take care of the person who has his oracle, this little eye thing. And, uh, you know, take care of him as soon as possible. So, if you're, like, Soraka, or if you're, like, I would, I would say Jenna's okay, you can have that. Soraka, Tariq, per se, if you don't have Shatter. Um, like any other non sustained slash non uh, squishy or squishy support, you definitely don't want to get it. So you can try to ask your jungler who will be the next person who can probably kind of get the item kind of quickly, definitely to get that item. So yeah. Uh, other than that, I think we're all good about sports. For now. Uh, yeah, I would say we covered the basics. Yeah, definitely, indeed. So we're going to go into another game really quickly. Let's get out of this. And uh, we're going to be taking a break again. This is Learning League Episode 3. I carry. Okay, guys, we'll be right back.